Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast. And spears... Dan holds him up like this. Somebody else, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blowed his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. 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 Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. If you want more shows on a weekly basis, go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button, become a member. There you can get access to the bonus shows every Thursday. Bonus show for members on the app and on the website. You also get access to ad-free listening of the Tuesday shows and overtime segments when they're available. I haven't done one in a while. I think I'm due for one. We'll have to look into that for you. But if you want to be a member, go ahead and check it out. Theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button. Become a member today. And also... This episode is brought to you by EMPShield.com. If you want to protect your vehicle from a possible EMP attack, lightning strikes, or anything of the like, go to EMPShield.com, get the devices for your vehicles, and use coupon code TONY for $50 off every item you get off that website, EMPShield.com. All right, today we got an in-studio guest. We got Brian. Can I say your last name? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Brian Jeffrey here in yeah. studio. Brian, how are you, man? Doing well. Doing well. A little, little bit under the weather. A little bit under the weather here. Cool. <laughs> but I'm good. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> so you are a local guy here. Yeah. And uh, I forget. I feel like somebody shot me one of your videos on DM on Instagram. And I checked it out, which usually I just gloss over. I have no idea what made me hit it, but I just remember looking at your channel. And I don't know what happened. I just figured out that you were local to me. I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy's local, you yeah. know? And uh, we went out to lunch, you, me and Jack, like what, a couple months ago, right? Yeah. 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 You got to, got acquainted and here you are. Um, before we get too deep, tell the people who you are and what they could, where they could find you. Yeah. So, uh, like you said, my name's Brian and I run the YouTube channel, Black Mass Paranormal. Um, I mainly concentrate on YouTube. Um, the best way to contact me though is through my, like my Facebook, um, page. That way you can send me a, a, a message and I usually respond to those pretty quickly. Uh, also got Instagram. I'm trying to get in the TikTok thing, man, but <laughs> it's, you know, uh, I just <laughs> don't do it. I know, I know. It's a downhill, <laughs> like it is just. I don't know. I, I, every time I get on there, it's like my life's just ticking away. You know. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I'm uh, from East Tennessee originally, and uh, you know we live in such a great area, and there's so much here. Um, you know, with the Appalachian history, that I really love to bring those aspects of our culture out to uh, YouTube. Yeah. 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 Did you say the name of the channel? Say it again. Black I Black Mass. Paranormal, black mass paranormal, yeah. and is that because like you're doing black masses? Uh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. So the name of my channel actually came from an experience that I had. Um, 
So I had lived in this old house uh, in this area that was from um, the late 1800s. Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, or as you know, and, and experiencing now, Tennessee is humid, like really humid, yeah, like a thousand percent humidity. So uh, one day I had been sitting on my couch and um, this was in the middle of the summer. So super humid. And it, the house, you know, like I said, was from the 1800s. Well, the air conditioning system didn't work too well. And I'm looking down the end of my hallway and I see what it, I think is a person. It's this black mass at the end of the hallway. So I jump up. I'm bull rushing down to the end of the hallway because I think I'm about to throw hands with somebody. And all of a sudden, there is nothing there. And the hallway is so cold that I can see my breath. And from that point on, that's kind of when I decided I was going to start sharing um, the, you know, my adventures into the paranormal. So, all right. So that, 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 that experience, was that the yeah. genesis of your interest in the paranormal? Well, I'd always been interested in the paranormal. Um, my mother was really interested in the paranormal, and she was actually kind of into learning about the good side of witchcraft. Um, and, you know, growing up, I always thought it was kind of weird. I, you know, I, I took it kind of like a, a grain of salt, but um, I was always kind of fascinated w- with the idea of it. And then uh, once I moved into this this house, it was just like game on because um, I had so many different um, things happen in that house. We actually had to leave the house um, and move because of the paranormal activity. Wow. Um, yeah. So I'll just kind of go through the story of it. Uh, yeah. So, go yeah. ahead. So this house um, was built in the late 1800s. Um, so it had started once I see this black mass in the hallway. That's when like my, my kind of radar goes up, and I start thinking, you know, maybe that there is something going on in this house. Um, and one day, um, I had been out at work, um, and and I came back home. And my wife had just made this like awesome meal and I like to eat. So I was all excited and I'm like, all right, I'll set the table. So I go and I get the plates and I'm setting the table. And by the time I get down to the last one, I look over to my right and I see this plate and it's spinning in a circle. And as I'm kind of looking around the table, I'm noticing all of these plates spinning just by themselves and I like totally freak out. I don't know what to do. So I just take my hands and I slam them really hard down on the table. Okay. So that stopped everything. And my wife at that point was kind of like, why'd you just do that? And I didn't want to freak her out, you know, because this is our home, you know, this is where our kids are. So I'm just kind of like, and I hadn't told her about the experience with the black mass at the end of the hallway at this point. So then after that, Stephanie starts being like, hey, you know, I keep hearing like this weird whispering sound or, you know, she'll talk about, you know, just odd things that are happening around and she doesn't, and I'm trying to dismiss it all. You know, I- I, Is Stephanie your wife? Yeah. Okay. yeah, Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to dismiss it all. So I, I'm not freaking her out. I'm not freaking the kids out. Um, and then one night we are laying in bed and um, the house has got, you know, one of those kind of rancher porches on it. And I hear um, footsteps uh, walking up and down uh, the porch. So at this point, I'm like, okay, there's somebody on my front porch. So, you know, I get my firearm, I walk around, I open the door and I announce myself. I said, you are on, you are trespassing. I have a weapon. You need to leave immediately. And I'm looking on the porch, but I'm not seeing anything. And it's like the porch is kind of uh, perpendicular to uh, this wood line. And I'm hearing at this point, the footsteps 
um, on the wood, in, like in the wood line, um, kind of pacing back and forth. So I say it louder. I'm like, I have a weapon. You are trespassing. You need to announce yourself and get off of my property. That doesn't change. I'm still hearing the kind of footsteps. And at this point, it kind of changes direction. And I can start hearing the footsteps walking towards me. So I say it again. And the footsteps get faster. And I can hear the, tra- and I'm like listening to the transition. And th- that's what's so crazy is because I, I can remember every little detail about this <laughs> incident. Yeah. So I'm hearing the transition from the wood line to the grass to the concrete. And as soon as I hear the concrete, like, I don't even know what I'm look- looking for, but I'm hearing these, this thing charging at me. And I raise my fire- firearm. And start shooting. Are you serious? Yeah, like I, I, because I didn't know what to do, man. Like, I, what am I gonna do? Like, shoot it out of air. Just yeah. shoot that air. <laughs> totally ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, and it just I I feel like this kind of rush of wind at me, and I'm like, holy crap! Like Stephanie's freaking out, you know, because she's thinking. Nah, you know, I just got in gun. You're killing people. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I walk back inside. You know, I mean, it, it's an area where, where, like, I mean, really, gunshots is not that big of a deal because it's out in the, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, 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 I'm like totally like freaking out at this point. Like, I, I don't even know what to do. So uh, several other things, kind of smaller things. Oh wait, no. Uh, uh, another big thing happened. I forgot about that one. Okay, so. Um, the way the layout of the house is at the end of the hallway where I'd seen that black mass, that is where the, the uh, bedrooms are. Okay. So there was a, a bedroom all the way to the far left. There's a bedroom to the far right. And then there was another room right in front of that other bedroom. So um, my wife and I were in the back left bedroom and my kids were each on the bedrooms on the right. So at this point, my kids are really little. And um, earlier in the day, we had, you remember Lincoln Logs? Yeah. You know, those, yeah, yeah. those things. Um, I still got them laying around my house, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and my son had been building little, like, you know, little Lincoln Log ta- town thing. And um, so we've got these little uh, cabins basically scattered all over the floor. Um, and I'm hearing uh, one of the, audible uh toys going off so i'm thinking um my son has gotten out of bed is you know down at the end of the hallway um or in the living room uh playing with his with his toys so i get up now keep in mind i walk past his bedroom to get to the living room all right so um i i walk into the living room and um i'm like hey you know you need to come to bed you know it's late and all of a sudden, I hear these little footsteps, and then the Lincoln logs go flying across the room, like hitting me in the feet. And I'm like, what the hell? So my son would have had to run past me to get to his bedroom. So I turn on the light. The living room's completely empty. The you know Lincoln logs are scattered everywhere. And I'm like, what just happened? So I turn around, and I walk into my son's room turn on his light. He's dead asleep in his bed. I go to my daughter's room, turn on that light. She's dead asleep. So I'm just out of my mind at that point. Like, I mean, it was such a crazy experience, you know, because I was so certain, I was so certain that it was my son that was in there playing with the Lincoln Logs, Lincoln Logs, but it wasn't. Uh, I have wow. no explanation for it. So at this point, uh, my wife and I are both, for lack of better words, totally freaked out. You know, I mean, we don't really know what to do at this point. My experience with dealing with the paranormal um, is basically non-existent. Like, I, I really have no idea what to do. Um, and then that brings us up to uh, Christmas Eve. Always Christmas Eve. It's yeah. always, dude. Like, like you know, the, the 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 bells are ringing and the spookies are playing. Man. Oh man! So, um, my wife and I, you know, I'm a big Christmas guy. I love Christmas. Um, always have. 
um, it, you know, just puts me in a good mood. So Christmas Eve, um, and I, of course, always wait until like Christmas Eve to start wrapping presents just because that's the way I am. So, um, Stephanie and I are, uh, in the living room wrapping presents and we start hearing this, uh, scratching sound. And at first I'm like, you know, maybe it's a mouse, you know, or something, you know, digging in the wall. And I'm able to actually figure out exactly where the scratching sound is coming from. And it's coming from the wall that's behind me. And I walk up and I'm putting my ear to the wall and I can hear the scratching. And at this point, it has gotten so loud that I can, it feel it sounds like something is about to climb through the freaking wall. Like it is just digging into the drywall, like scraping down. And Stephanie is, I turn and I look at her and she's completely white because at this point she realized it's not a mouse. You know, there's something else going on. Mm. So like I'm trying to rationalize the situation. Uh, there's a crawl space underneath the house. Um, I climb underneath the house. I go, you know, kind of army crawl down up into where that was. And I'm shining a light and there's just like nothing but cobwebs that, you know, I see because if, and that's what makes it even scarier because if it was some sort of animal, the cobwebs would have been Be gone. gone. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, we we're just kind of like, all right, it's time to go. So, yeah. So you moved out. So we moved. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, you move out. Yeah. Let me ask you this because I don't know if I've ever, I'm sure I have, but did you tell the people that it was haunted when you moved out? Or oh, no. you're just like, good luck. I didn't say anything. Good luck. Like, we were gone. Yeah, we were gone. Wow. We were Did gone. you say anything yeah, to the real gone. estate agent so nobody knew? Nope. You never left. heard anything back about the place? Nope. Man, I'll tell you, uh, I, it wasn't paranormal, but uh, we, when we moved down here, a week after we moved down here, my real estate agent in Pennsylvania called and she asked for the information of the contractor who renovated my house seven years prior when we bought it. And uh, it turns out a week after I moved, water started gushing through the roof when it rained. And I was like, if that happened a oh, week man. sooner, they would have backed out. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, holy crap. So we got him yeah. the information and hopefully, you know, he, you know, stood by his warranty because he said it was a 10 year warranty on the roof. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully he took care of it for him. Yeah. But I was man, like, wow. Yeah, yeah. But the, anyways, the, the idea was uh, nobody, you know, reached back to me like, Hey, um, yeah. ha, did, when you lived here, did you ever notice like, uh, demons <laughs> coming out of the ceiling? <laughs> Nothing like that. Well, no. Uh, -uh. well, there was a, there was a, uh, it was actually a rental house. Um, so the, um, the owner, I would imagine he knew something he knew. about it he knew. because also, um, you know, after this stuff starts happening, um, I start like looking around the house trying to fix, because I'm trying to put, uh, I'm looking for like, uh, some raccoons or some sort of big nest or s anything to be able to dismiss some of the things that are happening. Obviously, the bigger stuff, I, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I go up into the attic, which he had um, uh, kind of walled off. So I had to unscrew the entrance. You know, a lot of some of a lot of the attics have just that pop up door. Yeah. Well, he had screwed that down, and I unscrewed that. And that's suspicious. Well, it gets worse. So um, I get a ladder and I'm climbing up in the attic. And when I get up in the attic space, I mean, it's a pretty small space. I look over and I see a wall and I'm like, there shouldn't be a wall there. So I kind of crawl over there and it's that old kind of um, like ship lap. Like, you know, you see in the old movies where. Uh, somebody like falls through the wall and they've got the weird spacing with yeah. the wood. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like that. So I, I'm, I'm over there and I'm looking through and I'm seeing all of these like old mannequins. Like, yeah. And I can't, and it's completely walled off. So the only way I could get to that side of the house would be to cut through the freaking wall. So at that point, I'm just like, all right, there's just some craziness going on in this place. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. But yeah, that's what really kind of sparked my interest in um, trying to 
show people what I experienced. You yeah. Know? Um, and because they're in these paranormal adventures. Okay. Uh, like getting to be able to see one of these shadow figures. Um, it's extremely rare. It's even rarer to be able to ca capture it on camera. Um, but they have this unique coloration to them mm. that it's like, it's, it's almost black, but at the same time, it's like the blackest black you will ever see. It's like one of those colors that it's so hard to describe. And I've, and so ever since then, I've, I've been trying to find a way to be able to convey that to other people and show them that these things are actually out there. So what, what you're describing, I've heard countless times, right? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times people say in a dark room, it's blacker than the black in yeah. the room. Yeah. So the way I think of it is uh, almost like I, I try to think of the blackest I can think of like, uh, you know, yeah. th there was a lot of black in this room. Like these cameras are real deep black, but then right. it's like just something that's so much darker than that. And it's just, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. And so for somebody who's see seen this stuff, I can imagine it's hard to convey that. Yes. Uh, but I've heard that a lot. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Uh, when, so you had these, these, these experiences in the house kind of catapulted you into all this. Yeah. Uh, and you started doing paranormal investigations and stuff like that. Right. What was the response of your wife when you're like, hey, you know that scary stuff we had happen in the house? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to start hunting that stuff. Yeah. So she is kind of one of those uh, people that's interested in it. Um, for sure. Like if I, I she, she gets so excited when... Um, I actually capture something on camera, you know, and she's like really, uh, like supportive and like, that is so cool, you know, but at the same time, she's like, we have a rule. She's like, you are not to bring anything into our home. She's like, the day that you do is the day that this stops, oh. you know? <laughs> so I got to be very careful about um, how I do things. And then if I do bring something home, I got to be quiet about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, dear, I didn't come across any red <laughs> demons out there. I don't know what yeah. you're seeing. <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually have brought something home before. Really? And yeah, man. It was, uh, um, so I was investigating uh, this house that used to be a candy factory. Okay. And they had, the couple had moved from New York and they were like, oh, this is, you know, so cool. It's an old candy factory, you know, in East Tennessee. But so um, you got to remember um, it is East Tennessee um, and it was a factory. So um, the, there was some bad things that gotcha. happened there. Um, so. I, I had been investigating this house for probably, I don't know, I guess it was about a week at this point. And um, I had made connection to what I had thought was a little boy. Um, and we had come to find out that there had been uh, a, a little boy that had lived um, in the house that had been... Um, I can't remember the details of it right offhand, but um, he had been killed somewhere on the property. And um, so it was a, while I was investigating, it was a very um, kind of personal experience. It was very, uh, it wasn't like threatening or anything like that. Like it wasn't, I wasn't scared um, or intimidated by this situation. Um, but I had gone home and I had, laid down to go to sleep and I started and I, to this day, I feel like it was a dream, but I, I don't, I don't know what it was. Um, I was laying in bed and I look over and I see this little boy and he's wearing this blue kind of, or it wasn't blue. It was this, uh, it was a, like a blue and yellow, uh, kind of like flannel shirt. And I was looking at him and he was standing next to my bed. And I remember staring at him and I, I, and he was like trying, he was talking to me, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. And I 
at that point, I kind of got up and I, I sat up on the uh, on the corner of my bed and I was like leaning over, you know, if somebody's trying to like whisper to you, you, you like lean towards them. And um, he had taken, he, he raised his hand up and he took his finger and he put it in the center of my chest, like, and then I woke up. Okay. So at that point, I'm like, that was a weird dream. You know, I go back to sleep. Don't really think anything of it. Get up the next morning and I go to the bathroom to take a shower. I take my shirt off and I'm looking at myself in the shower, in the, in the mirror. And there is a burned fingerprint in the center of my chest. Mm. Like I, I can send you the picture of it. And it is, and I mean, it's just to make sure it's from the waist up. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's a, <laughs> that's for my OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so it, it was, I mean, it was, uh, it's the shape of a fingerprint. Like, in, wow. in, in, it's a burn mark that stood, that stayed there for like several days. And um, at that point, then I had started having some weird things happening around the house. Um, and this is where, when I, developed um it really kind of drove me to figure out uh how to handle this situation because yes you're going out and you're paranormal investigating that's awesome it's fun you know but there needs to be a uh, a stopping point to that you know like we were saying beforehand uh before this interview, we were talking about, um, you know, how we kind of never quit. Mm. So I needed to find out how to deal with the situation to not allow these things to be in my house and not allow them to follow me around or to bother my family. And um, so I developed, I don't want to say it's like a, a, it's not a ritual, but you know, it's this process now that I do every time I go on an investigation to kind of break apart, um, to not allow these things to enter my home. So um, yeah, the outside of my house though is, uh, it's uh, kind of scary. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is it scary because, uh, things happen out there because oh, yeah. it's yeah. like almost like their domain kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. D- all right. Yeah. Before you go any further, all right. I, all right. So I had, do you know who Scott Carpenter is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was in here, I, I'd say three months ago or something. And we recorded a, a, a show. Um, and he was telling me about all the creatures yeah. that are in this area. Yeah. And um, and he told me when I told him where I lived, he's like, "Oh yeah, you got you got oh, him yeah. out there." Yeah. And and I'm like, okay, you know, and, and it, you know, I I figured I did, and it doesn't really, I I don't think about it though, you know. Right. And so last night, I had a. Uh, a, a brass meeting of Merkel Media. We had the, the all the meeting of the minds, and um, before that was at nine o'clock. And so usually around nine o'clock, my chickens are just starting to mosey in right now to yeah. the coop. And uh, I, I, I had lost a chicken last week, and I've been staking out my coop, waiting to see what comes back in because it must have happened right before they went in because that night I had gone out and there was a chicken that had got locked out because I got one of those automatic doors. And, um, and so I put her in and then when I came out the evening, the next day is when I saw all the feathers everywhere. My wife said that she saw feathers earlier in the day and she just didn't think of it. And I found the body in the corner mm. and it was eaten up. I think it was a possum. But, uh, so I've been staking out the, the chicken coop trying to see what's coming in. And, uh, last night, because I had this meeting, I couldn't be out there at that time. So I was, I went down beforehand, probably about 845. And I started up a fire to try to maybe deter anything while I wasn't watching. Mm-hmm. And I went over to the coop and all the birds were already in. And I was like, oh, that's kind of, they usually got a good 30, 45 minutes yet. Yeah. And I, uh, I go in and I, I check the, the coop. Yep. They're all in there. And as I start leaving, I get by the fire. I thought I heard footsteps in the woods. And I, I couldn't, I, I wasn't sure if it was bipedal. I wasn't really thinking that much of it because there's animals around, whatever. Like I, right. I, <clears throat> I always have a gun on me. I'm like, whatever, it's yeah. fine. Uh, and then I heard what sounded like a, a pretty large stick 
snap from the weight of something walking. And I and I my head jerked up and I look in the woods. My eyes must have gotten real big. And I take the flashlight out then and I start shining in the woods and I see nothing. I see nothing. And I'm just like, okay. So the whole way back to my house, my chickens are a little further from the house than they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I walk backwards the whole time. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. but it, it got me thinking last night about how Scott Carpenter says they'll come into your property and uh, he has, uh, wait, I forget what he said, he, all, well, all he does, but he has things that basically uh, puts up spiritual boundaries around his property that they come yeah. up to it, but they don't cross over it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's going on outside your house that you're talking about? Well, see, so that's, that's the thing. And <clears throat> with doing this stuff, I'm a very uh, technical person and I'm a very rational person. I know it doesn't really fit well with being a paranormal investigator, but um, uh, I personally believe that, you know, our understanding of our existence on this planet is almost non-existent, e even with the, how advanced our technologies are, how, you know, amazing, the amazing things that humankind has been able to accomplish at this point. I don't think that we're even close. So I, I think that there is a, a connection there between these and really the best way to describe it is different dimensions uh, for us to be able to wrap our heads around, mm -hmm. you know? So with the, the paranormal, like on the ghost kind of side of it, and we'll get into the cryptid stuff a little bit later, but um, on the ghost side of it, I, I believe that we have the ability to set boundaries, you know, whether it is that are, that could possibly um, I, me personally, I believe that it's our faith in God that allows us to set these boundaries, but, um, on either side of the spectrum or, or maybe it's just our, you know, our, our physical existence that allows us to have this power, you know, to be able to set these boundaries and to, um, prevent these things from entering, um, kind of our, our personal space because, you know, with it, it and it's worked like I've been, and, and you sound like a crazy person doing no, it. No, man, you you're, know, you're in the right but, house for crazy. <laughs> but I mean, when you're, you know, if, if you have a ghost in your house or whatever it is, um, by setting those boundaries, by saying you are not allowed to enter past such and such area, you know, they tend to um, accept that and, and, and they will stay, uh, you know, on those boundaries. And when this kind of first happening happened to me, um, it was really bothering me because, you know, I was going out on these investigations and these things, you know, were following me um, that I, I felt like they were following me because, you know, I, things would move in my house. Like I would, you know, hear, you know, talking uh, you would hear footsteps like, you know, I mean, and I was capturing it on camera. So it wasn't just like I was crazy. Like, I mean, this stuff was actually happening. Um, you know, the light switches turning on and off, like recorded it on camera. Like it, it wasn't like it was a debate hmm. on whether or not this was actually happening. So once I was able to set those boundaries, um, it really, it, it stopped inside of the house and I wasn't bothered anymore. Um, now on the outside of my house, um, it's a little bit of a different experience. So, uh, one night Stephanie and I were sitting on our back porch and, um, the kids weren't there and we were just kind of having a little, you know, a little bit of a date night. And, um, there was a, um, I, I had been working on the floors in my house. So there is this tool. I can't think of the name of it, but it's, um, uh, you use it to, uh, pull up, um, hardwood floors. It's like a long black piece of steel um, crowbar. It was kind of, it's kind of <laughs> like a crowbar. Yeah. So, um, Stephanie was, uh, sitting near the railing. This thing was sitting flat on a table and had been sitting on this table for, I have a hard time with putting tools away sometimes that I don't use all, all the time, you know, yeah. um, uh, it had been sitting on flat on this table for, you know, more than a week. And Stephanie's sitting there talking 
to me. And all of a sudden we hear this woman's voice and like we both hear it and we're like, who is talking, you know? And then all of a sudden this metal bar comes flying over Stephanie's shoulder and hits me in the leg. Yeah. Like at that point, Stephanie's like, you're dealing with this. I'm going back inside. So she goes back inside. So I'm sitting out there. There goes day night. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sitting out there, you know, with my digital recorder and my EMF detector. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what, what, you know, what, who this person is, what's going on. And, um, I was eventually able to kind of break it down to uh, there was a woman that had been in a car accident in the 1950s that had left this tavern that used to be like right up the road from me. And, you know, she had died there. And basically she was just, and that's another side of it, um, is that when you start recognizing this stuff and trying to communicate it with these entities, individuals, you know, whatever it may be, um, they communicate back and they will kind of search you out. So, you know, there's, that's another, uh, important part of being in the, in the paranormal and, um, kind of looking at it, you'll see guys like Scott Carpenter that are actually able to go out and capture this amazing footage and have these amazing interactions. But it, it, it's a way that they, I, I don't know, maybe recognize us that we are actually looking, you know, for them. And they, you know, will reach out and, and show their existence. So, and and you've experienced that yourself, as far as uh, the the putting yourself in this situation and and having things happen and things yeah. like that. I, I know I know you have. Um, we, we when we, before we started recording, I, I told you kind of what I had on my list of just kind of things to you know hit on, topical but wise. But I, I kind of want to skip to because I was going to say this for later, but I kind of want to skip since you brought that up to what happened to you last week. Oh, because yeah. I mean, I, I know you've shared with me before. You've had a lot of interaction with things, mm-hmm. um, but when we had lunch, you told me that you you I don't know if it's recent, but you started moving away from paranormal per se investigation more right. to cryptid out yeah. in the woods hunting monsters, which right up my alley. Yeah, um, and and you uh, you were out, and I don't know if you go out looking for specific things or if you're just putting yourself in an environment because that's kind of like how I am. Like I'll go. When we do our films, like when we did, um, well, the Washington trip recently, mm-hmm. we went out to a, a place that was known to have heavy Bigfoot activity mm-hmm. that had a very dramatic Bigfoot encounter. And we put ourselves in the environment and see what happened. Right. Things happened. We didn't get eaten, but right. things happened, right? Is that how you approach it? Or do you go out there and you're like, okay, I'm going out there to look for Bigfoot and that's all I'm going to find? Uh, no, that's pretty much how I, I approach it. You know, I, I try to stay as open minded as, as possible when I when I go out on these investigations. So, you know, I will get a lead on um, a possible encounter or, a, you know, somebody had a, a, a crazy experience out in the woods. So I will kind of say what I what I feel like it is if it is a Bigfoot if it is a dog man if it is a feral person you know I will address that and say this is what these individuals are reporting happening in this area but then it, it tends to kind of sometimes go a different direction you know um and I and I just roll with it you know and, and because um we we haven't established you know, um that they're the the Bigfoot exists, the dogman exists, the feral people exist. You know, we haven't uh in, in the scientific world, you know, although um w- what the uh they recognize Bigfoot now as an endangered species. Where? Um yeah, Google it. I don't use Google. I use DuckDuckGo. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, Communist. it's it's on there. It's <laughs> big. Bigfoot's recognized. Wow. Um, yeah. So. Um, I dig it. So yeah, I just kind of I, I I roll with it. You know, I um, and, and that's the hard part of it. You know, because people like to be able to say, "Hey, this person 
goes out and he looks for Bigfoot and he finds Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but in the paranormal world, that's not how it works. Yeah. You know, you find footprints, you know, you find scat, you hear sounds, you see things move, uh, you know, you you hear metal doors shut, and you know, you you experience all these different things. And then that's kind of ha- how it works. Yeah. So, but you know, I personally, uh, I I feel like there is a there is a Bigfoot, um, that there is a dog man, and um, you know, a lot of these other, and there is a Mothman, which um, I'm actually going to be doing a Mothman investigation here locally coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I cannot wait for that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you uh, before I go into what I was just gonna say, uh, you say a Bigfoot, a dog man. You mean topically, right? You're not saying right. that there's only one, right? Okay. Right, I right. just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figured that's what you're saying, but yeah. I wanted to clarify yeah. for the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because if you were gonna say yeah, there's only one, I'm like, okay, sir, get out. Yeah. Get no, out. No. no. <laughs> no, 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 no Definitely not. <laughs> Okay, let's take a second and talk about our sponsor today, which is HelloFresh. HelloFresh has been a staple in my household and it should be for you as well. It is pre-portioned ingredients put together by professional chefs with jam-packed flavored, all delivered right to your front door, on time, on demand, done through their website and their app. It really doesn't get much easier than that. If you want some slamming flavorful food, whether you're hosting or you just want to have some good food in the house, but you don't know where to start and you don't know how much to buy of everything, HelloFresh takes the guesswork out of it all. We use it all the time here at the Merkel household, and I really hope you guys are taking advantage of these deals. They've been offering our listeners for over two years now. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Confessionals50 and use code Confessionals50 for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Confessionals50 and use code Confessionals50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Go get your HelloFresh today. (laughs) So uh, I kind of teased it earlier here, but last week you had some activity. Yeah. Tell the people what happened. So I start getting, um, the night before I start getting, um, all of these messages coming through my phone. Um, people out in the teleco area are saying that, um, they are seeing this large canine, um, Mm. basically roaming around and, but nobody has been able to capture a picture of this thing. Um, and that it's eating dogs, um, that it's like scaring the crap out of people. So, um, of course I'm like, all right, I'm going. So, you know, I pack up my bags and I, and I go. So this area, um, is actually about three, it was 3.8 miles, but say three and a half miles from where last year, um, I had gone on an investigation which somebody had captured what looked to be a uh, a dog man on um, a game camera. So I go out to this area looking for the dog man. Okay. So as I, at this point I had, had been hiking for, you know, at least like an hour and a half out in the middle of the woods. Um, I had kind of come across to where this old looks like a, some sort of service trail or, or something um, where the trail had widened significantly and there wasn't any weeds or anything there. And as I'm walking at, at this point, I'm kind of like, well, I'm not seeing signs of anything. You know, I just kind of thought it was a bust. And I look down and I see these massive footprints. Really? Massive. Last yeah. week. No, this was last oh, year. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. So I'm getting so you're uh, saying that this was this was the experience from that was 3.8 miles from the other from got, the new one. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm looking down and I see these huge footprints. And I'm like ecstatic at this point. Like and, and that's another thing, you know, I get a lot of hate on my channel because like I don't but because I don't take the time to 
do all the measurements and stuff like that. But it's a huge print. Like I put my foot next to it and it's like bigger than mine. Like, I don't know what else you want me to do. Yeah, yeah. it's exciting. Like, <laughs> you know? like shove and enjoy the process with me. Okay. Stop criticizing. <laughs> and I'm totally alone, you know? Yeah. And I, it, okay. So after I find that print, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm like, looking around and I'm totally flabbergasted and I see this big black mass moving through the woods. I mean, it sounds like a freaking dinosaur moving through the woods. So of course I'm like, all right. And I actually, and the funny thing is, um, I actually turn the camera to myself and I, and I say, I think I'm about to get eaten by Bigfoot. <laughs> like, and, and I was dead serious. Like, I really thought like I was about to die. And there's the trailer for the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Okay, so at that point, um, I have established that there is a a Bigfoot in this area to the point where I am um, I'm I'm now able to take people out to this area, and you'll find Bigfoot footprints. Like, no kidding. Like, uh, like I will take you out there. There will be Bigfoot prints out there. Is this the area we're going to today? Uh, we could. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? Maybe maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that because we're planning on going out today. It's my the day of of this recording. It is my wedding anniversary. Happy uh, sixteen years to my wife Lindsay. Uh, so I do have dinner reservations. So we're trying to get out there and get something done before I have to get to dinner. Yeah. So okay. Um, so um, back to the messages. So I get all of these messages, and um, I'm like, okay, I'm going out at this location. So this time, um, I had I, and YouTube um, can break you down in like in a way that nothing else on this planet can break you down. <laughs> so I had been getting these comments about people saying that I wasn't actually alone on these investigations that I'm going on, that I have somebody else with me. And you know, sometimes I do take people with me, you know, but I always make sure to be like, yeah, here's the person. So, um at this point, um I'm like, okay, I'm going to strap a uh, full spectrum rear facing camera on my uh backpack and that way everybody's going to be able to see, you know, in front of me and behind me the entire time. So, um Editing wise, it drove me absolutely crazy because I've got this little box, you know, showing the rear facing while I have the front facing and it's, it just, it, it drives me nuts. Double your work. Yeah. It doubles my work. Yeah. yeah. Because then you got to line up everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I'm out here for, you know, a good, uh, over an hour. I, I have hiked and hiked and hiked. Um, and there is nobody else around me. There's nothing around me. Um, I had taken my thermal camera on multiple occasions and like looked and tried to see if I could find anything because I did keep feeling like I was being followed. You know, there's that unique kind of feeling that you get sometimes, um, when you feel like there's somebody like on you. Well, I, had gotten out of the trail and had worked my way back around to basically like the trail head. And I'm like, okay, so I'm pretty confident at that, at that point that there is something else out in the woods. So I'm just going to kind of sit here for a minute. Um, my flashlights had died. Um, I mean, it hadn't completely died, but you know, when flashlights go down, it gets like really mm -hmm. dim. So, and I was still at least a half a mile away from my truck at this point. Um, so I'm sitting there and I hear something in the woods. Now in, in this area, um, there was the trail head that I had come out of and where I had captured this thing, it was extremely dense brush, like blackberry uh, briars like I mean it was like you couldn't just walk through that quietly and you know be right there um, so I'm looking over and at first I just see kind of like a head and shoulders what looks like to be kind of coming out of this really dense brush area and I'm sitting there and I'm like looking at it and I'm trying to shine my light on it I can't see it but all I can see is this just pitch black outline of this thing. And so I turn on my thermal camera and you can 
kind of and the way that it comes into frame is it to me is really fascinating because my my thermal camera picks up to uh i think 2000 feet so i mean it's 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 a good distance um and you know i wasn't far from this thing and it just all of a sudden kind of comes into frame and i'm looking at this thing and it's like at least eight foot tall and it's just kind of pacing like going like back and forth like and i can't figure out what's going on but i'm seeing it on my thermal camera you know i can't i can just barely see it with my eyes but i can see it really well on my thermal camera and then all of a sudden this thing just kind of starts like walking towards me <laughs> and i'm like yeah nope i'm out of here so i oh. turned and I, I i was gone you know all right so yeah. let me ask you all right so the thermal camera camera that you have you're seeing this happen on it. Yeah. Does it record video? Do you have this on video or is it yeah, just a picture? Yeah, it's on video. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. you sent me the picture. You didn't send me there's a video. I thought it was oh, just... Yeah. No, it's on video. Yeah. Yeah, I just released oh, the video. Man, yeah. man, man, man. Well, we're going to definitely add the links to your channel, that video in, yeah. in the, the description of this episode. Holy crap, yeah. dude. So it starts walking towards you like it yeah. noticed you. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Yep. How far were you from your truck? Oh, I was a good probably half mile from my truck. That's the longest half oh, mile. Oh, dude, I felt like yeah, I uh, yeah, I it, it was uh, I was in a total panic. Like I didn't want to just take off running because you know that's one thing that you do not do um, if you're dealing with a bear. Even um, there's no bear in this area, yeah. so I don't think it was a bear. Um, but you don't want to engage that attack. You know mode in their brain so like i was speed walking like looking over my shoulder just like oh my god this thing's about to be on top of me yeah, yeah. no i i that that's terrifying yeah. uh and you, you said you said that you think it was about eight feet tall yeah because just for people feet. people listening right now um definitely go check out the video yeah uh but what i what i saw it was something standing on hind legs. It was yeah. two, It was bipedal. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I can't tell in the picture how tall it is. Right. But if I didn't know you. Yeah. And somebody just said, hey, check this out. I'd be like, hey, cool. Your uncle's in the picture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what it looked like, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what, yeah. It looks like, it looks, a, like yeah. you would think it's a human being standing yeah. there. Yeah. It's bulky. Yeah. But uh, it's like, wow, man. Yeah. Wow. And it was just pacing back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it was that's weird. What big, that, that's it what they say Bigfoot does, it, right? It, com it just, it comes into f like, and it wasn't like it walked from the side of the frame. Like I'm, I have the camera directly on this thing and it just kind of comes in. It just, all of a sudden the camera just lights up. Like you, it, it's, it's weird. So it's really weird. How far was it from you? You'd say, um, I would say probably. Mm, mm, 30 yards. So 30 yard distance and it's coming towards you. The camera's lighting up. I mean, is that, are you suggesting that it came in on you fast? Yeah, I would say it was moving towards me with the purpose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if it, it could, was. It could have got you. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yep. It goes back to what we were talking about with this, the idea of there's certain almost like rules of engagement at times. Yeah. It, it really seems like it, it's like uh, we're, we're, we can scare the hell out of you. Yeah. And we can pace you. We can follow you. Yeah. But God help you if you pull the gun and actually shoot at us because now all the, the and, handcuffs are off. And, and that's the thing. And, you know, that's uh, one of the hard things to do when, when, you're, when you're running a YouTube channel and you're trying to investigate these things. Yeah. Like, when do you engage, you know? Um, because people have this expectation that um, when they click on a Bigfoot video that, oh, and I'm not saying this is applied to everybody, but it, those certain trolls that mm -hmm. you know co that come about yeah um unless you have like a sit down podcast in 4k um you know they are just not willing to even consider it mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and that's what can can be uh frustrating a lot of the times because even though i showed over an hour of footage of me 
um, front and back, so you can see all around me mm -hmm. at all times. Like there is no reasonable explanation on uh, for me not to if there was uh, say just a huge person out there that I didn't why how how I could not have picked them up on one of those cameras at some point. Like that's that's what is what what's really baffling to me is you know this entire time like i heard kind of something moving in the woods but i i never picked it up on camera until the very end when i was able to you know get the thermal on it it's so. almost as if it allowed you yeah. to see it like it, like if it's been almost avoiding you the whole time and all of a sudden it's like all right let me pop out here just pace back and forth like oh i'm a dumb idiot yeah. you know oh oh you got a thermal yeah. and now it's time to scare the hell out of you yeah you know it's yeah. just it's yeah. wild, man. Yeah. That's wild. Is that like, what, what, is that the wildest thing you've ever had happen to you out there? I mean, that seems pretty wild. I've never, I've never gotten any monster on video. It's up there, man. Uh, I would say, I, I would say it is. Um, I mean, it's pretty, it was pretty, other than when I had found the, the Bigfoot print and then that, whatever that black mass was that was moving through the woods. Yeah. So I'm, and then I got shot at one time. You know, it's interesting. You, oof. <laughs> well, that's that's typical around here, I'm sure. You, you venture too far into somebody's property by accident. Yeah, yeah. Bound to happen. And everybody's got pigs to make it disappear. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, it, it's interesting because you said that was down towards Teleco. Mm -hmm. How far is that from here? From here? Time-wise. Um, let me think here. I can look at all right, well, it, it, it's not that big of a deal. Probably like 30 minutes, I'd oh, say. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. 30 minutes. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, the, it's the Greenback area. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the area that Scott Carpenter goes to a lot, or at least used to go to a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and he was telling me, uh, it's more than three months ago now that I think about it, because he told me that we needed to get out there before the leaves started growing in, because it's mm -hmm. so hard to access. Yeah. But, uh, and we didn't. Um, but, he was telling me that this is this area. He's like, if you want to, you're going to get it out here. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, it's hard for me to imagine yeah. that it could be that almost on demand because, um, I mean, before I was a podcaster, I did go out looking for Bigfoot on weekends. I'm, I'm driving truck during a week on weekends, going in the Appalachian mountains in Pennsylvania, looking for monsters. Right. Didn't get any action. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the one time I had, um, wood tapping or something but it could have been a yeah. wood knocker i don't know uh yeah. or what is it called a, a, a what's the bird that knocks on wood um woodpecker woodpecker there we go yeah. um and the only other time that uh, that in pennsylvania was um me and jack went to a old world war ii prisoner of war camp i think i told you this over lunch and we had gotten like a bigfoot howl at us really? and yeah and and Oh, I'll never get over the fact that I had just turned my camera off and his camera, we didn't know, had a broken microphone. Mm. And so everybody's like, you're a lying. I'm like, go ahead, say I'm yeah. a liar. It is what it is. Yeah. But, and, uh, that, and that happens a lot. Like, and, and that's what's, what's crazy about this field is that you, it, and I don't know why it happens, um, it, the way it's able to happen like that. It's just, um, for instance, when, uh, John from Exploration Unknown and I went up to um, Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. Oh, that's the one you asked me to go on, right? Yeah. 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 So um, we, they had opened up um, HiMax for us. And, you know, we were trying to do a little bit more of the ghost kind of hunt because, you know, it's one of the most haunted prisons in America. Mm. And, um, I had walked in, John had to go out to his car to get some more batteries. And I had gone into HiMax um, all by myself. And I was walking around HiMax, you know, filming and uh, trying to investigate. And um, I walk outside and I'm getting ready to put in a dip so you can hear me digging, digging in my pockets. And I had taken my camera and I would set my camera down, but I didn't turn off recording it was still recording and out of the blue we captured or i captured this just scream that was so unbelievably loud that 
Um, so high max is in the very back of the prison <clears throat> in the front of the building. Um, it's an administration area that, uh, you know, it's all solid concrete. And that's where there was, there was some other people there that night and they were all sitting, um, inside the administration building, um, that's solid concrete, you know, and they hear this scream from inside of the administration building. And it happens twice. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, um, I, I set my, I had set my camera down and, and it's really kind of funny um, when it happened because it was so terrifying because um, it was happening as John was walking back up to Supermax to meet me. And he had uh, actually walked around the back of the building um, and he didn't have any of his camera equipment set up or anything. He was literally trying to find me. He was like looking around, trying to find me. And I'm out in front of the building. And all of a sudden, I'm not sure if you know John, but he he's huge. He's a tall guy. I know he, of him. I've never met he, him. Yeah. Um, he, you just hear him just ass and elbows, just, just going, Brian, Brian, like trying to find me. And then all of a sudden this scream happens, man. And it is the most terrifying sound. Um, it, it's probably the most terrifying sound that I've captured, uh, to date, you know? Wow. So, wow. It was awesome. I missed that. Yeah. You missed it. Oh my you gosh. It. You know what? That's it. Yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. So, like, yeah. uh, what, what was it that you just said you were going to be going out to do not too Which long? Which one? Uh, Mothman. Mothman. What, what's that yeah. about? So um, there is an area that is not too far from here. It's a, a national forest. Um, I'm not going to specifically yeah. say because I'm going out there. Um, but um, I had been out there, uh, I guess it was about a year ago or so. Um, I, we... John um, from Exploration and Josh. A little closer to Mike. Uh, sorry. That's right. Uh, and Josh from Southern Afterlife. We went out there to do a uh, like ghost investigation because there's this old cemetery out there as well. Um, <clears throat> we had, John had been out there before and had recorded um, what sounds to be like wings, like really loud like wing like woof, like sound um and my brother who uh is a fishing guide um has also seen uh some sort of other uh huge winged creature out there as well um so we had been uh camping overnight um at this point it was like uh, about four o'clock in the morning, um, John and Josh were uh, sleeping in their sleeping bags um, in their hammock, um, and I was sleeping in my truck. All of a sudden, I hear like what sounds to be like somebody took a bucket of water and just dumped it on my truck, and then my entire truck starts shaking like something landed hard on my uh, headache bar. Uh, not sure if you saw mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. Okay. So something landed on that thing and like shook my truck. Like it was so loud. And, um, John and Josh are both in their hammocks with their sleeping bags over their head. And I just hear, uh, I think it was John just go, Brian, are you alive? <laughs> it was so scary, man. Um, uh, but there has somebody else had, um, uh, sent me a, uh, an encounter that they had up there, uh, not too long ago. Um, because it's a big hunting area as well. Um, he said that he was up in his tree stand and was, uh, he had like a, a night, kind of like a night vision, like scope, but it like didn't record. It was just, you know, for, for hunting. And, um, he said that he was looking through the trees and, and what he described as like this giant bat, um, that had, that was sitting in this tree. And there's been multiple um, sightings of this giant winged creature up there. Now, a lot of people, there's actually been a lot of sightings in Mothman, of Mothman in Chicago. Right. I'm not sure if you realize that. Yeah. But, um, you know, to me, 
I, I think it would be total, totally reasonable for a Mothman to be in, you know, this area here, you know. Everything else is. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> we have, there's plenty of, uh, you know, there's plenty of water. There's plenty of food. Um, you know, our boar population is crazy, you know. Is it so, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it like open season on them? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. It, they came here it, <clears throat> originally from the uh, Europeans. They brought them over as food. Mm -hmm. And then it was just the absolute perfect environment for the for the Russian boar to, you know. I, I mean, do their an thing. animal that eats everything has a lot to eat around here. Yeah. I mean, like my pigs, yeah. they, they, I, I, I'm, I'm rotating them around the back of my property and they're just eating up the areas that are too hard yeah. to get to the lawn with a lawnmower and stuff for me. Yeah. You know, property control right there. Yeah. But the Russian, the, the boar population here is scary, man. They will I didn't mess know that. you up. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to look into that more. Yeah. Um, I, I've got a buddy that spear hunts them. What? Yeah. He, he's a nutball. Yeah. Wild man. Yeah. He climbs up in trees and yeah. Right around here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to turn this into uh, the, the the meat eater podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I'll talk to you about it later, though. Yeah. Um, so th that's really interesting. The 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 Mothman, and plus you got the Smokies here. I oh, mean, yeah. it's like so vast. Yeah, I, I I can't even fathom. I haven't ventured into the Smokies a whole lot since being here. Yeah. Uh, partly because I have no idea where to even begin. Like, right, and also I don't know what the the rules of engagement are here in, in Pennsylvania, you're hard pressed to find anywhere, at least where I was, that, that is not somebody's property mm -hmm. that you can't, it's just like, you can't go on because everybody owns everything there or, yeah. you know, so I, I got to venture into checking that it's the Smokies out, but something like that, uh, Bigfoot, Dogman, all that stuff can certainly exist here. Oh yeah. At ease. And clearly they yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, Let's wrap it up with feral people, though. All right. Because when you and I sat down to, uh, to have lunch, you were saying how you were looking into doing a video where you were going to... I feel like you, you said something about North Carolina, but also that there could be feral people here, or how did that mm -hmm. whole work? So, okay. Um, the understanding of the feral people. Um, this is kind of like addressing my opinion on this i actually haven't really done so this might be a good opportunity yeah. to, to do that because at this point i've been researching it now pretty seriously for probably about two years um the the feral people um i think is a so i guess we can start from the beginning um so during the Civil War, uh, there was a lot of individuals that did not want to participate in the war at all, you know. Um, so in order to avoid going to war, they would have to, you know, commit dis desertion. So in order to do that, they are going to have to get themselves in an area where they won't be found okay now this also in my opinion i feel like it happened with the native americans the native americans um obviously they loved this land so much that they weren't willing to leave it now throughout all of appalachia and all of east tennessee we have a vast vast amount of caves we have cave systems that you can travel essentially across the entire city on. So there is there are plenty of areas for where these individuals could hide. Now, there needs to be a distinction made between somebody who is running from the law and somebody who is actually feral. Now, in my opinion, the the feral people, the humans um can revert back to our most primitive stage okay so our brains our bodies are amazing 
you know, we, our bodies have this unique uh, ability to survive through, you know, all kinds of different situations, all kinds of different climates. Um, when an individual separates themselves from society or from a group and goes and moves to these, one of these vast areas, like even in the Smokies, um, they have the ability to revert back to those primitive ways. Now, whether or not they are able to come back out of th that mindset, um, that survival instinct is, you know, we don't really know yet, but um, we have, there, there is through American history, there has been, you know, tons of documented cases of people going not to just live off grid. I know the off grid kind of living, I'm using air quotes and I don't know why. <laughs> the, uh, uh, off, the off grid living has kind of a different meaning to people nowadays, but, um, there has been plenty of individuals that have gone out into the mountains and survived solely, you know, by themselves without any supplies, without you modern know, technology. Yeah. Without anything, you know, and if you look at, um, even throughout the world, we still have tribes today that are completely cut off from the rest of the world that, you know, that are still thriving. Um, so with the idea of feral pe people, in, in my opinion, um, there has been a, a, a sect, and it could have happened um, in, in different parts of Appalachia. They may all not be connected, you know. Um, mm -hmm. They have separated themselves from society and have reverted back to that primitive, primitive mindset of survival in which they are solely living off the land and they have no reason to connect with outside society. And when they do have that connection, their first instinct is to defend themselves. You know, I mean, if, if you think about any animal, any, I mean, we're, we're all animals, but if you think about any animal in the wild, if you approach that animal, it's going to get defensive. Mm -hmm. It's going to defend itself and it's probably an attack. Now, if somebody is with the, advanced brain of a human you know most likely that attack is going to be a little bit more it's going to be more vicious and more powerful now um and the reason why i got into studying um feral people is because it's been a part of east tennessee culture it it always has you know growing up if you talk to anybody really from east tennessee they uh they will tell you that like their grandparents told them you know don't be going out in the woods at night you know there's there's things out there there is this acceptance in our east tennessee society that there is something darker in the woods now to me um the the idea of feral people is uh really more tangible in proving than um like bigfoot or yeah. dogman you know so and you know i have been out on on trails where i have found uh humanoid bare feet like you know 30 miles out in the middle of the woods you know where there shouldn't be anybody you know um, I've experienced like crazy things. I found uh, like, um, rudimentary traps, um, you know, uh, ways of, you know, maybe trapping animals or I'm not necessarily saying that they're trying to trap people, but, um, indications of a advanced, um, animal. I don't really know the best way to say that. Um, of critical thinking in order to capture some sort of uh, a meal, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, with the feral people, and also, um, if you talk, uh, with a lot of the moonshiners, they, they will talk about it, you know, that they've had, you know, run-ins with these people that are just living completely off grid, you know? 
Um, now the question is, uh, are, are they inbreeding? How is this being able to, you know, transfer from generation to generation? And, and it's, it, it's a good possibility that, you know, there is inbreeding going mm. on. Um, you know, if you look at the, the white, was it the soft white underbelly, uh, soft white underbelly. Have you seen him? He did a special on, um, this family in West Virginia. Yes. Yeah, yeah, where the cops took them out to the place and they were all living out there real yeah. remote. Yeah, I did yeah. see that. Yep. Yep. So, you know, we know that just by kind of looking at that family, mm -hmm. you know, it it's possible for this to happen and for um, these individuals to survive genetically. Now, you know, granted, they aren't in the best of shape, but at the same time, you know, they are still, you know, surviving. Mm -hmm. Um so for us as society, I think it's important that um, we recognize the possibility that there are people out there. You know, they, they could have um, for a variety of reasons. I mean, you have people that are running from the law, you know, that are facing a life in prison, you mm -hmm. know, or, or possibly even death. Um, why wouldn't they? you know, go out there. And the way that our bodies are um, set up, we have the ability to adapt and to, you know, overcome, you know, different obstacles. And um, the question that a lot of people have is whether or not um, these people are um, aggressive towards you know, just the kind of lay person walking through the woods, you know, are they an, an answer to a question you know, are they an answer to why these people are going missing even, you know, there is tons of cases of people walking out in the woods and then just absolutely vanishing. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the cases that I'm, I'm, currently working on michael heron um it happened not too far from here um, that sounds familiar that name yeah um in 2008 um he went up to uh he he had uh like a condo in maribel just like right right up the road up here hmm. um and then he had this other property up in um the happy valley area and um I think it was his son's house or it was a family house where, but they had uh, multiple family members living in this kind of one area. So Michael went up to the house. He had gotten on a, uh, a four wheeler and was just kind of riding it around and um, totally vanished. The four wheeler was not wrecked. Um, it was left in high gear um, and it looked like he had just, turned the ignition off, but the key was, was still on and there has been no evidence of what happened to him hmm. whatsoever. There was no blood found. The ATV wasn't wrecked. Um, no sign of struggle, no sign of struggle, nothing. Like it was like he was on an ATV and then just disappeared. So, um, and a lot of people have uh, <clears throat> attributed his disappearance to the feral people because of the area that it is. Um, it's near um, Abrams Creek, which um, I, I did a video on it. So you can actually go and see what the area is like. I mean, it, it's, it's back country, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's pretty desolate back through there. Um, and even when I went out there, I had, um, Heights, you know, at this point, you know, several miles out to where I wouldn't imagine anybody would be. And I found bear footprints, not like bear as in the animal, but B A R E, not B E A R. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like humanoid, humanoid footprints and what looked like to be human, humanoid feces. Um, wow. So, you know, in, in the area, um, it is is pretty pretty desolate, you know. And when he uh, disappeared, um, and if if you kind of look at the trends uh, of America, this was, you know, during the recession. 
So, um, you know, this was an area that was for lack of better, uh, lack of a better word where, you know, the lower class lived, you know, I mean, yes, there were some area, there were some houses where you know, the richer people had, but you know, the majority of the individuals living out there, you know, weren't the multimillionaires, you know? So when, um, such an econ economic crisis happens, you know, the poor, the, the, Poorer people feel that way before anybody else does, you know? Yeah. So with that area, you know, there is a possibility, you know, that a lot of individuals, you know, lost everything. I mean, uh, my parents lost their house during that time, you know? So hmm. um, where do you go at that point other than maybe, you know, just going to survive off the land? And just say screw society, yeah. you know. I mean, so it's um, it's a very unique topic, and it's a very taboo topic. You know, I get a lot of hate for speaking out on it. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I know, I know it is. Um, but it's it's a reality that I think that it's important for us to address. You know, yeah. um, I don't think that we need to sweep it under the rug or even be embarrassed by it. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a topic that should be talked about because so there's so many people that in the Bigfoot world, they're like, oh, well, you know, this is how they operate. They just, they see human beings and they just want to be left alone. They stay in the shadows and all that stuff. Well, take that same mentality with the feral people it, that, that literally might be what's going on where they, they see us as a threat and yeah. it's like, don't get too close. Right. And if you do, maybe you don't go home. Yeah. Uh, and and what uh, Michael experienced that day, we don't know, but the fact that his, his four-wheeler was turned off, but in the on position, almost as if he saw somebody, turned the engine off so you can talk to him to see if they're okay. Hey, buddy, okay? Gets off his, his four-wheeler to investigate. Are you all right, sir? Oh. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Gone. No sign of struggle. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So this weekend, I'm heading up to um, the border of Tennessee, North Carolina to uh, work on a case where um, an individual was found that had a Kuru. Do you know what Kuru is? Okay. So um, you get Kuru when you are eating other humans. Oh. Yeah. So it's found, it was supposedly eradicated. Um, in Papua New Guinea, I think I want to say 2011. Um, but um, I had somebody, one of my subscribers, reach out to me whose son was a, a flight medic in the military. And after he got out of the military, um, he was working at his local um, EMS area as a flight medic there. Um, they had gotten a, uh, a call in of an individual that was like laying on the side of the road um, that was covered in ticks and just looked like he had been um, living out in the woods, you know, for years. And um, that they also said that um, <laughs> that what they described, uh, he described it on his chart as severe inbreeding. And then later was able to once again him back to the hospital, and they did testing on him to, to establish that he um, had a disease that you get from eating um, the. There's a prion in the human brain um, that can give you this disease. So, yeah. So that was a feral person, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or, or maybe just a guy that just. Uh... Is a cannibal? I don't know. I don't know, yeah. but uh, that's interesting. You're going that th this weekend to do that? Yeah. Wow. Is that in the New Newport area? Uh, no. Okay. No, no. it's on the. Uh, I'm actually going to be on the North Carolina side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a lady that I had on the show. It was a member show, but she it was from Newport, and her and her husband moved from, I think it was Virginia, to Newport seven years ago. Uh. They wanted to live there forever. They loved it. Yeah. And then uh, Bigfoot chased them 10 hours north to Indiana. <laughs> and, she, and she just messaged me. Her name's Carrie. She just messaged me on Facebook. I haven't answered it yet, but um, apparently they're having things happen at their new house in Indiana. And that's why oh, I'm wow. like, 
if these things are taunting you, yeah, they'll follow you. Oh yeah, and until and, and I think it's more than just uh, you know. I, I think there's a lot to the topic. We're not going to get into it right now, but um, she said that she has a roof walker right now, and oh, her. I think he yeah. said she said it's her daughter that's staying with them, and her daughter's starting to hear it. Yeah, and uh, and so it's it's getting very invasive, and I think she said that she laid eyes on, it and this was a dog man, uh, oh, wow. and so she has. It, it, there might be some kind of attachment to her family that's that's bringing this on. So I gotta get a hold of her and talk to her about it and see what's what. But uh, her old property is in Newport, and she told me exactly where it was at, and she told me that you know you go up there, and it, it's there, right. and. And she has a neighbor that moved from New York that she said probably would talk to me. There's this other lady she knows. They've had conversations about it that this other lady knows, but she said she won't talk to me. She's the kind of lady that like she'll greet you on her at the border of her property with a gun. Oh yeah, and uh, and yeah. she's like, and I'm like, well, I don't think I don't think yeah. I want. It. And I, I asked her. I said, uh, why don't you um, why don't you ask her if she'll talk to me? And, and she came back. She said she won't talk to you. Nah. And she asked her, yeah. and she said no. But apparently, some of her immediate neighbors will talk. Uh, and me, Scott Carpenter, we're talking about going up there. And just kind of fell through, like with a lot with me because I'm so busy getting out and doing this stuff is hard. But I want, I really desperately want to do it. And I'm in the middle of a transition period where I just hired Jack a couple months ago. And he's he's finally getting to the point where he's producing. Jack we would be like, uh, I would say ninety five percent of the stuff is you're producing. I believe so. Yeah, at least that. I mean, yep. we're, the idea is to have him produce a hundred percent, take over that, and allows me to do other creative things, and uh, maybe even getting out and doing investigations more. Because can't tell you how many times I'd be like, man, I'd love to go, but. Got to produce my show, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, I totally understand. So, yeah. uh, before we get out of here, tell people again where they can find you and all that stuff. Oh yeah, uh, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Black Mass Paranormal. Um, I've also got Facebook page, Black Mass Paranormal. Basically, just type in Black Mass Paranormal and you'll find me. Awesome. So, yeah, I found you on Instagram too. You don't update yeah. there much, though. No, I know I don't. I need to. Um, it's just one of those things, man. It's like one man show. I, I, yeah, and 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 I like being out in the field. You know, you know, I, I don't. You're not a social media guy. You're an investigator, right? You need somebody to do your social media for you. I do. What's new, what, yeah. what's Stephanie doing? Uh, well, she's a teacher. So <laughs> oh, okay. She, yeah, she's uh, <laughs> she, she's got a hands full. Build so. the sh- build build the channel up enough. Yeah. Get her to quit. And then she takes care of all that stuff and yeah. you get to go do the fun stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the plan. And that's the plan. I mean, that's what I got my wife doing, man. Yeah. Like, like she's the CFO of Miracle Media. She yeah. does my emails. She does she, yeah. does, she yeah. does all the crap that I'm not good at, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I that's what I really need. Because like I don't know, when people comment and stuff on my stuff or send me an email. Like if I don't respond or get back to him, like I genuinely feel bad. Yeah. Like yeah. I like I really do. But like I get so many of them, it's just like I can't keep up. Yeah. It's either like investigate or you know respond to comments or you know. Yeah. So it's and what's what? Why are people sending you emails and comments? Because you investigate. So that needs to be priority. Exactly. So, so you know. All right, people, check them out. Black Mass Paranormal YouTube channel. Uh, man, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I, I'm glad we were able to link up and I think this is just going to be a fun relationship over the next couple of years oh, yeah. for sure uh, hopefully many more than a couple of years but people check them out and if you enjoyed this show please share it with your friends I don't care where you share the show I highly recommend you share it, uh, via text message take the link and share it to the top five people you hate the most in your phone contacts list send it to them uh, <laughs> and just piss them off more but uh, share the show. I don't care where or how, just share it. And until next Tuesday, stay safe, take care, and remember the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. I'm just a note according to them. Trapped in encryption, just trying to ascend. Blending with parts, it's hard to pretend. Swimming against the current of trends. See you back. Sure, if what I
school, you know I'm styling. We on Jekyll Island, tax got us wildin'. Operation filling a blank, they keep piling. Operation filling my tank, I'm still smiling. I'm not sure if what I 